Who was the man who conquered the known world before he was 30? Imagine a time over 2,000 years ago in the land of Macedonia, in a city known as Pella. Here, in July of 356 BC, a child named Alexander was born. His parents were none other than Philip II of Macedon and his wife Olympias. From the moment of his birth, Alexander was destined for greatness. His father was a formidable king, and his mother, a Molossian princess, was known for her fierce spirit and cunning intellect. Growing up, Alexander was enveloped in a world of power, strategy and ambition. It was this world that would shape him into the man he was destined to become. Yet even in the grandeur of his parents' rule, no one could have predicted the heights to which Alexander would rise. A child born to a king and a queen, yet Alexander's destiny was to outshine them all. Alexander wasn't just born into royalty, he was born for it. This was a young man who, from an early age, displayed a natural knack for leadership and strategy, qualities that would later shape him into one of history's most iconic figures. Born to King Philip II of Macedonia, Alexander was given the best education one could receive in the ancient world. His tutor was none other than Aristotle, the renowned philosopher. Under Aristotle's mentorship, Alexander was exposed to a broad range of subjects, from philosophy and politics to arts and sciences. This comprehensive education shaped his mind, fueling his hunger for knowledge and his desire to explore the world. But it wasn't just his education that set him apart. Even as a young boy, Alexander displayed remarkable courage and strategic acumen. One such instance involved taming a wild horse named Bucephalus, a feat no one else dared to attempt. This act of bravery and determination not only won him his father's admiration, but also gave him his beloved companion, who would accompany him through many battles. Alexander's ascension to the throne, however, came under tragic circumstances. His father, King Philip II, was assassinated, leaving the kingdom in young Alexander's hands. Amidst the turmoil and uncertainty, it was his leadership that shone through. He swiftly dealt with the immediate threats to his reign, demonstrating his strategic prowess and solidifying his position as the rightful king. As a ruler, Alexander was not content with merely maintaining the status quo. His ambitions were far greater. He dreamed of an empire that stretched across continents, a dream that was considered audacious, even for a king. But for Alexander, it was a vision he was determined to make a reality. By the age of 20, Alexander had not just become a king, but a king with an unyielding vision. This vision would soon set him on a path of conquest, forever etching his name in the annals of history. But that, dear listeners, is a story for another time. The world was a canvas, and Alexander yearned to paint it with his victories. Imagine a young man, not yet even in his 30s, leading armies across vast deserts, over towering mountains and through dense forests. This was Alexander, and his brush was his army. His colors, the cultures and kingdoms he would absorb into his ever-growing empire. His first strokes were laid down in Asia Minor, where the Persian Empire had long held sway. Alexander's army, trained and hardened in the unforgiving landscapes of Macedonia, faced the Persian forces on the banks of the Granicus River. The battle was fierce, but Alexander's tactical brilliance shone through. The Persians fell, and the way to Asia Minor lay open. But Alexander was not satisfied with simply one victory. His ambition was insatiable, and he led his forces deeper into the heartland of the Persian Empire. In Syria, he faced King Darius III in what would be known as the Battle of Issus. Despite being outnumbered, Alexander's forces once again emerged triumphant. The victory was so decisive that Darius fled, leaving his family behind. With Syria under his control, Alexander turned his gaze towards Egypt. The Egyptians, weary of the Persian rule, welcomed him as a liberator. In a show of gratitude, Alexander founded the city of Alexandria, a testament to his ambition and the symbol of Hellenistic culture. Each victory was a new color on his canvas, each kingdom a new brushstroke. His empire spread across three continents, covering over two million square miles. His was an empire where the sun never set, where diverse cultures and people coexisted. 
where Hellenistic ideals met Eastern philosophies. And so, by his mid-twenties, Alexander's name echoed across the globe. His canvas was no longer blank, but a vibrant tapestry of victories, of cultures, of an empire that was one of the largest the world had ever seen. His was an ambition that knew no bounds, a vision that transcended the possible, and a legacy that would echo through the ages. His was the story of a conqueror that rose and rose and rose until the entire world lay at his feet. But even legends, no matter how great, must meet their end. As we trace the final years of Alexander the Great, we find a man grappling with the tolls of relentless campaigning. His physical strength, once his most formidable asset, began to wane under the strain of constant warfare. Alexander, the invincible conqueror, was not immune to human frailties. He was frequently plagued by bouts of illness, likely brought on by the harsh conditions of his extended military campaigns. These were the unseen battles that Alexander fought, a stark contrast to the glorious wars he waged and won on the battlefield. Even as his health declined, Alexander's ambition remained undiminished. He continued to march on, his eyes set on new territories to conquer. But time was running out. His final campaign took him to the heart of the ancient city of Babylon. It was here in Babylon that Alexander's legendary journey came to an abrupt halt. At the age of just 32, Alexander the Great, the King of Macedonia, the Pharaoh of Egypt, the Lord of Asia, succumbed to a mysterious ailment. The invincible warrior who had stood tall against the mightiest of armies, was brought down by an unseen enemy. The news of his death spread like wildfire across his vast empire. From Greece to Egypt, from Persia to India, a pall of gloom descended. The man who had once seemed invincible was no more. The emperor, who had dreamt of a unified world, had left behind a fragmented empire, teetering on the brink of chaos. His sudden death sparked a flurry of conspiracy theories. Was it poison, or a deadly disease? The truth remains shrouded in mystery. Alexander's death is one of history's most enduring enigmas, a puzzle that continues to intrigue scholars and history enthusiasts to this day. In the end, the world that Alexander had conquered was left to mourn his untimely demise. The loss of such a formidable leader, a visionary whose dreams were larger than life itself, left a void that was hard to fill, and thus ended the extraordinary journey of Alexander the Great, a journey that transformed the face of the world. Death did not dim the glory of Alexander, it only immortalized it. With these words, we turn to the legacy of Alexander the Great, a man whose influence reached far beyond his mortal life and continues to shape our world even today. Alexander's conquests, which stretched from Greece to Egypt and as far east as India, sparked a period of Hellenistic influence that left an indelible mark on the cultures and societies he touched. He ushered in an era where Greek language, art and philosophy were spread across the known world, fusing with local traditions to create a rich tapestry of cultural exchange. This was not just about the spread of culture, but about the creation of something new, something vibrant and enduring. The cities Alexander founded during his conquests are testament to his enduring influence. Among them, Alexandria in Egypt stands out as a beacon of Hellenistic culture. Named after Alexander himself, Alexandria became a hub of learning and culture, housing the famous Library of Alexandria and the Lighthouse, one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. Even now, over two millennia later, the city carries the indelible mark of its founder. Yet it was not just through the cities he founded, but also through the tales of his exploits, that Alexander's legacy was cemented. His life, full of daring adventures and ambitious dreams, became the stuff of legends. Stories of his courage, his leadership, and his indomitable spirit have been told and retold over the centuries, inspiring countless generations. He became a symbol of what it means to strive for greatness, to challenge the unknown, and to carve out one's own destiny. But Alexander's legacy is not without its complexities. Yes, he was a great king and conqueror, but he was also a man of contradictions. He was known for his generosity, yet he could be ruthlessly ambitious. He sought to unify diverse cultures under his rule, yet his methods often led to destruction and upheaval. 
His life is a reminder that greatness is often a double-edged sword, bringing both progress and turmoil. In the end, the legacy of Alexander the Great is as vast and varied as the empire he built. His cultural impact reshaped the ancient world, his cities stand as monuments to his ambition, and his life continues to inspire tales of heroism and adventure. But perhaps the most enduring part of Alexander's legacy is the spirit of ambition he embodied, his relentless pursuit of greatness, his refusal to be confined by the known world, and his audacious dreams continue to inspire us today. They remind us of the power of ambition, the allure of the unknown, and the potential within each of us to leave our own mark on the world. Alexander the Great, a king, a conqueror, a legend. His life was a testament to the indomitable spirit of ambition, and his story continues to resonate through the annals of history.